He wasn't born with a tennis racket in his hand, but it didn't take long for David Wheaton to find one. At the youngest of age, I think I was four years old, I was taken down to the, the public court just down the street from our house, and my brothers and sister were playing tennis at that time, and my mom started tossing me balls. I was wearing like a Speedo, uh, Stars and Stripes bathing suit with no, no other clothes on besides that, with a little cut off wood tennis racket. Do you have a picture of that? I think I do, but I'm not gonna show it to you. I don't wanna be blackmailed later okay. about that. Eventually, David gave in and shared this footage with us. He says childhood was a joy. Part of that idyllic childhood had to do with the fact that my parents were very strong Christians and they were very committed in their faith and they um, had a purpose of raising all of us uh, to grow up to be followers of Christ. And so I really had a great modeling in the home of what it meant to be a Christian. And his parents encouraged him as he developed his tennis game to pursue his dream of becoming a professional tennis player. David made the high school tennis team when he was in the seventh grade. As a freshman, he won the Minnesota State Championship. At 15, David was offered a full scholarship to the famous Nick Volatieri Tennis Academy in Bradenton, Florida, where he competed against other young upcoming stars like Andre Agassi and Jim Courier. I was in that realm of being in the very competitive, driven uh, junior tennis world, playing tournaments throughout the year. And, you know, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty tough scene, actually. Tennis was really my focus at that particular time in my life. David won the U.S. Open junior title and achieved a number one ranking on the junior circuit in 1987. The following year, David accepted a tennis scholarship to Stanford, one of the premier programs in the nation. As a Christian, though, David found more challenges in college off the court than on it. Going to college is hard. Going your way from your parents for the first time, the temptations of the flesh on campus, sexual morality, drugs and alcohol. So going after college, I went down that sort of partying lifestyle and, and I was going down the wrong path. Although David was making poor choices in his personal life, his tennis career was taking off. He helped Stanford win the 1988 National Championship his freshman year. From there, he pursued his lifelong dream of playing professionally. In 1990, just two years after he turned pro, David won his first major tournament. I beat Agassi and Lendl along the way to get to the semifinals of, of Wimbledon that year. Uh, and so it was a very uh, heady time, sort of jumping up the ranks quickly. David qualified to play in the year-end Grand Slam Cup. At the time, it was the biggest prize money event in the history of tennis. David beat Michael Chang in the finals in front of a worldwide audience. But to his surprise, the thrill of victory quickly evaporated. And within about 10 or 15 minutes after this big, biggest win of my career, biggest moment of my life in tennis up to that point, you know, most everyone was gone. And I remember thinking, wow, that was really over in a hurry. My goodness, I mean, I mean, where's the victory lap here? I mean, am I going to be running around the court or what's, what's going on? And I think it was the first time in my life that I really realized that fame, fortune, success, what so many people ch chase after in life, that wasn't going to be very fulfilling. That's when David began to question his purpose in life. My relationships with my parents were, were broken because of the way I was living my life. And my relationship with God obviously was, was very broken. And the relationships I had with other people were, were not right. And, and just the things going on in my life had, had led to me being, yeah, I was outwardly successful, but inwardly I was very conflicted. David turned to his Bible for answers. As I began to read the word and, and to um, just be under the conviction of God in my life, you know, I came to realize how much I was offending God by my life and how much I couldn't change myself. And at that particular time, over that month or two period, I came to a point of real repentance in my life. And I committed to following Christ and believed that He was the Savior of my sin. I trusted to follow Him as Lord. And my life changed immediately and 180 degrees in the, in the, the right direction. David went on to win four more tournament titles that spanned a 13-year career, including a Wimbledon doubles championship in 2004. Most of his focus these days, though, is as an author and host of a nationally broadcast radio talk show called The Christian Worldview. But of all his successes, there's one David regards more highly than any other. Being in a right relationship with your creator, being reconciled to God, I mean, this, this is the highest purpose in life. I mean, you can have everything, you can have nothing, but whatever situation you're in, if you're not reconciled to your creator, if you're not in a right relationship with the God of this universe, you are never going to have 
uh, a satisfying, fulfilling life on earth. And also, of course, there's the eternal benefit of having eternal life with Christ in heaven. I mean, what's more important than that?